I always thought monsters under the bed were a joke, a silly story parents tell their kids to scare them into behaving. But now, sitting here in my room with the door closed, and the night pressing in from outside, I know better. It started with small things, like any haunting. At first, you convince yourself it's nothing, just your imagination playing tricks on you. I'm eleven. I'm not a baby. But when you're lying in the dark, staring at the ceiling and trying to fall asleep, that's when it's hardest to pretend nothing is wrong. I think I noticed it for the first time about a week ago. I'd been reading a book in bed, a flashlight tucked under the covers because mom always says no lights after ten, and I didn't want to get in trouble. It was a fantasy book, something with magic and elves, the kind of thing I've always loved. I was at a really exciting part when I heard it. A scratch. A tiny, soft scratching sound, like someone running their fingers along the floorboards. It was faint, but in the stillness of the night, it felt loud enough to make my heart race. I turned off the flashlight, holding my breath. The noise stopped. I lay there for a few minutes, listening, but there was nothing else. Eventually, I convinced myself it was probably just the house settling or maybe a mouse. We live in an old place, and sometimes mice get in from the woods nearby. I went back to reading, but I couldn't quite shake the feeling that something was off. The next night, the scratching came again. This time, it lasted longer. It wasn't frantic, but slow, methodical, as though something was exploring, feeling around. I didn't want to look, but I couldn't help it. I leaned over the edge of my bed and peered into the shadows underneath. Nothing. Just darkness and dust bunnies. But the feeling stayed with me, that cold, prickly sensation at the back of my neck that told me something wasn't right. I wanted to tell my parents, but how do you tell someone that you think there's a creature under your bed without sounding like a scared little kid? For the next few days, I ignored it as best I could. But ignoring something doesn't make it go away. The scratching got worse, louder, more insistent. Sometimes, I'd wake up in the middle of the night to the sound of tiny feet scurrying across the wooden floor. I'd freeze, barely breathing, hoping it would stop. Hoping it wasn't real but I could hear it moving, just underneath me. Then, things started to go missing. It was small things at first, hair ties, pencils, erasers. Little things I wouldn't notice were gone right away. I assumed I'd just misplaced them. But then my favorite doll disappeared, the one I'd had since I was little. I'd left her on my bed one morning before school, but when I came home, she was gone. I searched everywhere. Under the bed, in the closet, even in the attic. But there was no sign of her. I asked mom if she'd seen it, but she just shook her head and told me I probably left it somewhere. You know how messy your room gets, honey, she said, ruffling my hair. It'll turn up. But it didn't. That night, I heard it again. The scratching. Only this time, it was different. It wasn't just under the bed anymore, it was moving around, like something was pacing back and forth, just out of sight. I pulled the blankets up to my chin, trying to stay as still as possible. Then, I heard a voice. It was faint, barely more than a whisper, but I could hear it. A high-pitched, scratchy little voice, muttering something I couldn't understand. It sounded like it was coming from right beneath me, from under the bed. Come out, it whispered, the words slithering into the quiet of the room. Come play. I couldn't breathe. My heart pounded so loudly I was afraid whatever it was would hear it. I squeezed my eyes shut, praying it would go away, that I was dreaming, that this wasn't real. But it was. The next morning, I told my mom. I told her everything. About the scratching, the missing doll, the voice. She just smiled that patient, condescending smile adults always have when they don't believe you. You're probably just having bad dreams, sweetie, she said. There's nothing under your bed. Why don't we take a look together? I didn't want to. I didn't want her to look, because I knew, deep down, I knew there was something under there. But I couldn't stop her. She knelt down and lifted the edge of the blanket, peering into the dark space beneath my bed. See, she said after a moment, looking back at me with that same smile. 
Nothing there. Just some dust. You'll be fine. I nodded, but I didn't believe her. I could still feel it. That wrongness. That sense of being watched. That night, I stayed awake as long as I could, listening, waiting. The scratching came again, and this time, it didn't stop. It went on for what felt like hours, getting louder, more frantic. I pulled the covers over my head, trying to block it out, but it was no use. Then, just as suddenly as it had started, it stopped. I lowered the blanket, peeking out into the darkness. The room was still, silent. But something felt different. The air was heavier, thick with the kind of silence that only comes before something bad happens. And then I saw it. At first, I thought my eyes were playing tricks on me, that the darkness under the bed was shifting, moving. But then I realized, it wasn't the darkness. It was something in the darkness. A small, shadowy figure crept out from beneath the bed. It was no more than two feet tall, hunched over, with long, thin arms and spindly fingers that scraped against the floor as it moved. Its skin was dark and leathery, like the hide of some long-forgotten animal, and its eyes, huge, round, and shining with a sickly yellow light, peered out from its misshapen head. I couldn't move. I couldn't scream. I could only watch as it crawled toward me, its mouth curling into a jagged, toothy grin. It reached the foot of the bed, staring up at me with those awful, glowing eyes. For a moment, it didn't move, just sat there, watching me, waiting. Then, slowly, it lifted one of its long, bony fingers and beckoned. Come play, it whispered again, its voice rasping like dry leaves in the wind. Come play with me. I shook my head, my throat too tight to speak. Tears welled up in my eyes, but I didn't dare blink. The creature's grin widened, revealing sharp, crooked teeth. You don't want to play, it asked, almost mockingly. But I've been waiting so long. So hungry. My breath hitched, and for a moment, I thought I might pass out from the fear. The creature tilted its head, watching me closely, as if deciding what to do next. Then, without warning, it scurried back under the bed, vanishing into the shadows as quickly as it had appeared. The room was quiet again. But I knew it wasn't over. I knew it was still there, lurking just beneath me, waiting. I didn't sleep that night. I haven't slept since. Every night, I hear it. Scratching, pacing, whispering from beneath the bed. And every night, I wonder how long it will wait before it comes back. Because I know, deep down, that one day, it will. One day, it'll decide it doesn't want to play anymore. One day, it'll want something else. And when that day comes, I'm not sure I'll be able to stop it. 